don't even know vision is a big deal. And not just the big vision, but you need to have vision assigned to every area of your life. Proverbs 29, 18 is where we'll start. And it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Oh, hallelujah. It says, but happy is he who keeps the law. You are the steward of your own life. And everything connected to you ought to have a what and a why. And where there is no vision, the people perish. That's an interesting word, the word that was translated perish. It's the word para, and it literally means to loosen or to be weak. To be exposed, to loosen, to expose. Isn't that interesting? Where there is no vision, I'm exposed. A vision is God putting something in your heart. Yes. Causing you to desire something in such a way that you begin to move forward towards what he's already preordained for you to have. I love God. He is the master setup artist. So he gives you the vision. He gives you the desire to accomplish and to realize what he has already promised to give you. Yeah. It's designed to move you towards something. If you don't have vision, you are stagnant. And it's not cool. Life has meaning when I have vision. All of a sudden, the sky is a different color. And not just watch this vision for your life, but vision for life itself. For life itself. What is life? Is it something that you try to carve a piece out of for yourself? Is this big thing? And, and if I can just get a sliver, if I can just get a slice, I'd be all right. Lord, if, if you would just allow me to, to carve out, is this life is a big old pie. And I don't need a whole pie. Just give me a little, just give me a little sliver of it and I'll be okay. That's wrong thinking. That's wrong thinking. You, you weren't designed to have a slither in life. You were designed to have dominion in life. Oh God. You, you, you were called and designed to dominate your sphere. See, when God created you, he gave you a sphere, yes. a sphere of power, a sphere of influence. There's a sphere assigned to you. He didn't bring you here without giving you a sphere. And what you have to learn to do is you have to learn to dominate your sphere. That's what the kingdom is. Jesus' sphere is the earth. So the kingdom was, he, he talked about advancing the kingdom, is to dominate the sphere that's been given to you. Heaven and earth is in my hand, says the Lord. And we see little by little his sphere being dominated. But you have a sphere too. But happy is he who keeps the law. What does it mean? That word keep literally means to tend, to protect, to guard. And the law is the word Torah in the scripture. It's a precept. And the root of that word, watch this, the root of that word that was translated law, because this is going to kind of break down some religious thinking. It says, happy is he who keeps the law. That The root word, so that word law means Torah. It means a statute or a precept. The root of that word, watch this, very interesting. It means to flow like water. My God. Wow. To flow like water. Wow. Or like the rain. So where you are kind of being all rigid and religious in your stuff, that's not even what that word means. That's why you can't be a lazy believer. You have to be one who accesses the presence of God, who accesses the word of God, so you can understand what God is saying to you right now. Mm. Can't be a lazy believer waiting on the pastor to drop your word. You better get your word in your prayer closet for yourself so that you can know whether or not what your pastor is preaching is relevant and applicable to you. Hello, somebody. Yes. 